Welcome to our presentation on reducing antibiotic prescribing in NHS Wales, the role of behavioural economics. I'm Emily Holmes and I'm a senior research fellow at the Centre for Health Economics and Medicines Evaluation at Bangor University. And I want to share with you the work that Professor Duffer Hughes and I have developed on using behavioural economics alongside clinical evidence to explain variation in prescribing outcomes. So the threat of antimicrobial resistance is a global health concern. AMR knows no boundaries, affects all people of all ages in all countries. And a key driver in that rise and spread of AMR is the inappropriate use of antibiotics. Now the UK action plan to tackle AMR identifies an urgent need to support antibiotic decision-making. We need to change the way in which we use antibiotics. And in order to do that, we need to understand the contribution of human behaviour. Now, this work was developed prior to the outbreak of COVID-19, but we have seen this change of landscape in the terms of how we deliver healthcare and research. And with this comes a real increased awareness of the influence of human behaviour on modern medicine. So that makes this work really timely. We're all now more familiar with the impact of individuals' behaviour on other people in society. So if we look at antibiotic use in Wales, we know that one in three prescriptions in primary care will be for an antibiotic and over 20% of these will be unnecessary. There are interventions to support the reduction in inappropriate prescribing and in Wales C-reactive protein point of care testing is recommended for patients with suspected lower respiratory tract infection where the antibiotic decision is unclear. So this finger prick test that's ready in under 10 minutes can help the prescriber make the most appropriate decision. Now, formative work that we did on CRP testing in Wales showed wide variation in the value of this test in routine clinical practice versus when you tested according to guidelines. So there is clinical evidence to support the use of the test. However, human behavior appears to be influencing the costs and the outcomes. And this has implications for NHS Wales as they respond to the 2025 AMR targets to not only reduce antibiotic prescribing by over 20%, but also to increase the use of interventions like point of care testing to support prescribing. So there's a real need for detailed evidence on how behavior influences the values of interventions that reduce antibiotic use in Wales. And that importance is verified by public engagement activities that we've conducted in CHEAM. So now let's take a look at the role of behavioural economics. This is a branch of economics that considers the psychological aspects of decision making. You'll recall earlier on in the presentation, I mentioned this urgent need to understand antibiotic decision making. And we can do that using two behavioural economic theories. Firstly, Lancaster's theory of value. Now, this theory simply states that individual preference are preferences are revealed through choices. And those choices can be described in terms of bundles of attributes. So there's some underlying characteristics that collectively lead to a decision. Now, those individual characteristics can be traded in order for people to maximise the satisfaction they get from their decision. So when we think of antibiotic use, people may be trading between immediate benefits versus potential longer term harms, for example. Now, the theory of intertemporal choice that looks at the relative value of behaviour at an earlier time compared to valuation later. So that's really important when we think about the association between inappropriate prescribing and the increased threat of AMR in the future. Now, both of these theories can be tested using stated preference discrete choice experiments. These are hypothetical questionnaires that describe scenarios in which people have to make choices and those choices measure the trade offs that the individual is making. So anti en antibiotic decisions are likely to be influenced by several trade offs when we think about not only the decision to request or supply antibiotics, but also interventions to reduce prescribing. So we can use this method to look at benefit harm assessments, so immediate benefits versus 
future benefits for both the individual and society. Preferences for service delivery of interventions to reduce antibiotic prescribing. So this example could relate to the CRP testing example that I discussed earlier. So we've got time to test result, who performs the test and where the test is performed. And in making a decision to use the test, people may be trading between those different attributes. And then also importantly, we have these preferences for immediate versus long term outcomes, and they can also be measured using the discrete choice experiment. And the outputs of that can give us discount rates for future benefits in evaluations. So now let's focus in on the DC methodology. I provided an illustrative example of how we would obtain quantitative evidence on people's preferences for antibiotic use. The methodology has a standard five stages, the first being to identify the attributes. And these are the characteristics that collectively contribute towards the decision. These could be taken from the literature, expert opinion, policy documentation, or qualitative work with public patients and healthcare professionals. One important aspect is that they need to be communicated consistently and allow the respondent to make their decision in a standard context. We then assign levels to those attributes and those levels are the evidence that supports option A and option B. And the levels vary in the experiment as the respondent goes through a series of choices. That experimental design could consist of between six or perhaps 20 different binary choices that are repeated throughout the experiment. The attributes always remain the same, but the levels vary, and that allows us to measure the trade-offs that people are making in their decision. That data could be collected in interview, on paper, but most commonly nowadays online. And in this context, we advocate online public and professional surveys so we can look at how preferences align between those who may be requesting antibiotics and those who are prescribing antibiotics. The data that is collected is analysed using a standard regression model and that allows us to gain quantitative assessment of these individual characteristics. So firstly we see which attributes are significant in the decision. Secondly, we can look at which direction the attributes go in, which attributes do people want more of or less, and that's indicated by the sign on the coefficient. The magnitude of the coefficient will give us information on the most important characteristics to the individual. And then the marginal rates of substitution is where we look in more depth at that trade off people are making. So here we have a marginal rate of substitution for a gain in health benefit versus the potential harms. And this is really interesting information when we want to look at people's willingness to accept um, increase in potential harm or decrease in benefits to minimise harm. Now, this information on preferences itself is valuable, but we can also develop a utility model where we actually weight the evidence we have on each of the characteristics by people's preferences. And we look at the sum of that to see the overall utility for different configurations and different levels of evidence. And we can also look at the probability of uptake of an intervention, for example, using this method. And this not only gives us further information on behaviour, but we can generate parameters that could go into existing or future models. In conclusion, the DC represents a robust and reliable method to quantify people's preferences for antibiotic use. And behavioural economics can be used alongside clinical evidence to explain variation in prescribing. I'm delighted that future work in this area has now been funded and that as of this month, I have commenced the Health and Care Research Wales Health Research Fellowship. And I shall be spending the next five years looking at the economics of rapid diagnostics to reduce antibiotic prescribing in Wales. And Work Package 1 will value the preferences of diagnostic tests that support prescribing decisions using a survey of public and healthcare professionals in Wales. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any queries, 
please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much.